Hello guys, Termex here, and today we're going over some of the worst skills in Borderlands 3. I know I'm probably the first person that will come to the defense of Borderlands 2 over Borderlands 3, but going back into Borderlands 3, I'm starting to enjoy it again after not playing for a long period of time. But I mean, other than the story, I mean, it sounds fire on mute. But I took the liberty of trying to find at least five different unique skills in Borderlands 3, including the purple tree, which I don't believe anyone has done yet. And you've probably seen this one coming. The first one coming in hot is going to be steady hands from Amara. It is towards the top of her skill tree over in Fist of Elements, but it literally just gives you handling and accuracy. Now, abilities and skills like this do really irk me in the Borderlands franchise because I don't understand why accuracy and handling is a needed thing. Most of the guns in Borderlands have zero recoil to them, and the only time I could see this maybe helping is with certain weapons that have spreading projectiles, but even on things like the Unkempt Herald, noticing the before and after with abilities like this is honestly not that big of a difference. And while we're on the topic of handling and accuracy, let's just roast every other Vault Hunter that so happens to have a skill like this. Like Zane over into his undercover tree when you go all the way down to Nerves of Steel. And it has probably one of the worst conditions I've ever seen for a skill like this. While your shield is full, you gain accuracy and handling, and you lose all your stacks if you take damage. So you can't get hit for 15 stacks just to get a 30% increase in handling and accuracy. Absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. You're going to have a dot at all times in Borderlands 3, or you're going to get tickled by the wind depending on what you're doing especially if it's end game content but the thing that's honestly more of a kick in the nuts is the fact that it's so far down into the tree as if it's some sort of amazing skill where alternatively in flax skill tree in the same exact spots over into his orange skill tree which would be the hunter skill tree he has an ability called grim harvest which gives him skill damage gun damage and pet damage and while we're on the topic of roasting zane skill tree placements i know thick fillet is foaming at the mouth right now but we go over into tunnel vision in the new purple tree the professional tree and towards the second row of the tree we have once again another handling and accuracy skill I, I i don't understand why these are in the game but this is even better while you're moving you gain increased accuracy and handling the faster you move the greater the bonus do, do i really need to go down the rabbit hole of why these skills suck all right, Moe's mains, you knew it was coming. We're going to go into Daka Bear, which is the first ability in the bottomless mags tree. Equips Iron Bear with a manable turret. While manned, Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Bear and its rider deal increased damage. Iron Cub always deals increased damage instead if you are not using your actual Iron Bear. This was not a thing before the purple tree, so I'm going over it again. The turret damage and the bear damage still is pretty bad because, I mean, if you're playing with your friend, it's just a overall damage decrease because if that gun does a bunch of damage which it doesn't it will never do as much damage as any other vault hunter using a generic purple shotgun which is absolutely abysmal and not only that i've been playing moe's in my recent co-op playthrough with some of my buddies and the camera angle on top of that bear is borderline unplayable if enemies are too close to you you can't hit them if they're too far away you're just staring at iron bear's ass cheeks so you can't even really hit them at a distance anyway cool concept cool skill if it could have been better but the only saving grace with daka bear is the fact that iron cub actually became a action skill and it allows a easy iron cub damage increase for just having the skill with one singular point 20 percent damage for one point is actually pretty damn good but on a fundamental level daka bear is definitely one of the worst skills in the entire game speaking of worst skills in the entire game let's go into the worst skill tree in the entire game which will be flax trapper gravity snare skill tree still to this day i'm so sad as a flak main that this is what we got for a paid dlc tree but going towards the middle of the skill tree we do have lethal force authorized reduces your pets respawn time which is by a 33 percent reduction but if you're playing flak the correct way there's really no reason to need respawn time but the other thing is when your loader pets specifically your loader pet would enter fight for your life it instead turns into a exp loader or exploder the exploder charges at an enemy and self-destructs dealing fire area pet damage i know that's a lot to take in just elemental damage that is also boosted by pet damage benefits in a large radius i've never seen this work in action I've never had my pet die, nor have I ever seen my loader pets die, and I don't understand why this is in the game. If anything, I probably would have done something different to where your pet, instead of dying, just like resurrects itself, kind of similar to something in the blue tree. It's a fun gimmick. It's a very gimmicky ability, but the only way you see a lot of use out of it is if you're using like a high risk gamma burst build. And if you're using a gamma burst build, you're not going to be that far into the trapper tree to begin with. So, definitely one of the less thought out abilities in all 
all of flak skill trees and as a certified flak main you knew this one was also coming we're going back into dominance now i know dominance has always been a pretty terrible capstone which is unbelievable to think it is a capstone but the fact that dominance is just as bad as it was prior to the rework really lets me know that just the whole mechanic of dominance does not work in a game like borderlands 3 and just to read it off really quick scoring a critical hit while aiming or meleeing an enemy establishes dominance and turns the target into an ally for a short time sounds pretty cool you can only dominate one target at a time and that target constantly loses two percent of their max health and is more likely to be attacked so it is a d aggro but arguably if you're that far down into blue tree anyway you're probably running red fang and you're probably running gamma burst so your pet is already taking aggro when the duration ends or the target dies they release a nova dealing radiation area skill damage and the reason it does radiation is for the aoe and it plays off of the success intimate ability over into the trapper tree which has the radiation novas that scale in the same exact way now the 12 seconds on any enemy is cool sure but it, when you really look at it there's nothing that's really too amazing about it the beast duration is doubled which is just another gimmick the way i would have changed this capstone to be a real capstone is make it so you only dominate people you melee and it only procs every 60 seconds so it's like an override melee ability kind of like uh uh, Salvador or Wilhelm did to where Flack would actually take out a device or maybe a whip. I don't know how that would go over with ESG scores, but then you would tase an enemy, grab an enemy, and make them your friend like actually your friend. You know how Flax pets have the green outline? That enemy would now also have a green outline. So hear me out there is no duration on this ability, there's only a 60 second cooldown between uses. So think about it you're going through Pandora, you mind control a badass, and he is now your friend forever. And until he dies or if you fast travel i don't know if they could make it to where if you fast travel he comes with you but imagine going through a takedown or going through pieces of content with flak with a army of maliwan soldiers just following you and it would actually make all his health regeneration abilities that are boosted in his green tree that much better because you'd have so many targets and so many allies on your side that all flak's health regeneration abilities would actually matter that's what i would have done made him more of a mind control character with this capstone other than that it's just another gimmick and for our final worst skill in borderlands 3 we're still sticking with flak i know he's getting a lot of punch down in this video but with flak he has a skill called all my bffs which requires three points you share a health regeneration portion with your team and your pets share double the health regeneration so if you get health regeneration your team members also get it if you get health regeneration your pets also get it your pets are getting more than your teammates but if you're playing solo this is useless if you're using any other pets I, i'm i don't think any pet really benefits from all my bffs when there's many other skills that flak has in that same exact tree that make it so his pet really never dies like rage and recover killing an enemy grants you and your pet health regeneration which is something you don't really need but if you use that with all my bff sure the health regeneration is there but at the end game level of content or even when you hit the 50s and 60s in borderlands 3 your pets are not really going to need health regeneration at least in my experience in the thousands of hours i've played with flak flak's pets are pretty damn resilient and if you're using the right ones for the right circumstance you're going to be fine the only caveat i will say is if you're using something like gamma burst with red fang obviously you might want to spec into something that will make them more tankier but the master skill tree does have the who rescued who skill which gives you and your pet instant healing of based on the damage you guys deal so if your pet's damaging a bunch of things you will heal and if you're laying into enemies they will heal as well that lifesteal is only five percent but if you're hitting every bullet for 50 60 000 damage that pet is truly never going to die now if who rescued who did not exist maybe the all my bff skill wouldn't make it on this list did i miss any let me know in the comments down below your least favorite or your worst skill in borderlands 3 this was just my personal list from all the vault hunters i played and if you did make it to the end of the video i really do appreciate you guys make sure you hit the like button on it as it does spread out my borderlands content to more people in the borderlands community and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on another video for me guys stay safe and I will see you all later.